Welcome back, everybody, to the Bass Fishing Underground podcast. Today, we've got a uh, special guest here. I think most people know him. He's won two, uh, won a Bassmaster Classic and an FLW Championship. Um, we've got Dion Hibden with us, and we're very excited to have you on. Thank you for coming, Dion. Special in so many ways, too. Yes, I understand. <laughs> Yes, I feel very special. There you go. This I just, is a, I just appreciate somebody wanting to hear me talk. Yeah, this, this is you know. and this platform here that we have, we've got like thirteen followers and six people that watch, and we'll get there two shares That's and perfect. one like. So I That's mean, perfect. The, I mean, we're practically uh, to a million. So. Sounds like my Facebook page. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. So no, man. Uh, what a special year. I mean, you you guys took a break for a year or two. Three. I don't know what the exact number was, but yeah. then uh, you got a young and chasing you around and. Maybe you're chasing him. Maybe he's chasing you. I don't know, but he's had a heck of a year. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it's been a it's been a cool year for Lawson. That's for sure. Uh, I don't know what's the matter with me yet, but but I, it'll come back to me surely at some point in time. Uh, but yeah, it has. It's been a very cool year. We uh, you know when Dad got sick, we we all you know my whole family took off a couple years. You know, uh, you know to be with him and and uh, you know and now that. Now that that's over with and we're moving on, you know, me and Lawson got back out and we're on the MLF tour or whatever it's called. Uh, what, what is it? Actually? I think you're close. It's ML, MLF <laughs> Tackle Warehouse. It may something. have changed between. Yeah. Them. <laughs> yeah. It changes, pro circuit. changes once a week. Yep, uh, pro circuit. But anyways, yeah, Lawson's doing great. I mean, he's had a great season. Uh, you know, like we were talking about earlier, you know, he missed the money one time this year and he's been complaining about it, you know. And uh, and needless to say, he's 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 going to be all right. He's he's got it figured out. And uh, you know, the Marshall deal. At first, I was kind of, you know, I've I've never really worried about uh, you know having a co angler in the boat with me. That's yeah. you know that's not a problem for me. I figure if if I can't catch the fish in front of an amateur, then he deserves to have it anyways. You know, for the most part, uh, you know, and. So I've never been somebody who, you know, really looked to this Marshall deal, uh, you know, like it was a great thing or anything like that. But, you know, really it has been fun this year. You know, I, I, I didn't realize what it would be like, but, you know, having somebody sitting back there kind of paying attention to what you're doing and, and, uh, and it really it keeps everything up, like on the computers and, you know, and the updates and the live feeds and stuff like that, you know. Uh, you know, Lawson making the cuts there at the Potomac River. I've watched all eight hours of the live <laughs> feed now, you know. And, and I think uh, we all did here in Missouri. Yeah, we were all cheering for them. Yeah, and, I, and I, that's something that I would not have done ever. Uh, and it's not because it was Lawson, but now that I've done it, that's pretty cool. Yeah. You know, you get to see guys, you know, you get to see guys blow up right in the middle of it just like, Oh my gosh, he's lost it, you know. And is that not hilarious to oh, watch? Oh, sometimes guy, it you know is. some of your icons that you're like, oh, and you watch him, you're like, oh my gosh, he's spun out. Like yes. he's spun out worse yes. than I am on a Saturday. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like a Tuesday nighter went bad, you know, or something. <laughs> and, and you know, and and this guy's making a living at this, you know. And you think, wow, that's that's really something right there. But uh, but it was, you know, it, it was very cool to watch Lawson and and uh, you know the fact that it happened on Father's Day too was pretty special, also. The, the uh, so. picture you guys posted on Facebook, I think the Boatworks Facebook page or the Baitworks Facebook page, they shared it. And, uh, man, that was special. Just oh, the look right. of, I mean, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine, you know, I've got a five-year-old and I just, I couldn't imagine that, you know, yeah. him wanting to do that. Just the, the whole situation was really a beautiful thing. And we'll, we'll probably try to get it posted up on the Facebook page so everybody can yeah, see it. It's, it's cool. It is special. You know, that that's, that's one thing that, you know, with my dad and, and, you know, me and him doing it together for so long and everything. That's one thing. How I, many years did you guys fish together on like on the tour level stuff like that? Well, I started in '85. Yeah, uh, I started in '85. In uh, you know, I got out of school in 1985, and that's when we started fishing. Uh, I was a pretty good wrestler in school. Had a couple opportunities to go to college, uh, but I had had a bad knee, and uh, they were going to have to operate on it. And you know, however long ago that is, I'm 54 now. Uh, you still walked around with a limp sometimes yeah. after some of those knee surgeries. <laughs> it's not like it is now, yeah. you know. Uh, and I thought, man, if I go to my freshman year of college and, and they operate on me and I'm out of the picture for wrestling for six months, 
I thought, I'll have the biggest beer belly of anybody on campus, you know, uh, because I did like to drink at that point. That's almost like the bass fishing teams now in college, I oh, think. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, it's crazy. The boats all go two miles an hour slower after yeah. their freshman year. But, uh, <laughs> but it, it, it's it's just Roll tide. it's just one of those deals that, you know, I, I thought, no, I can't do this. I, you know, and uh, and dad says, well, we'll just start fishing harder. And uh, when he said fishing harder, we fished four different circuits that that season uh two circuits of u.s bass bass and then uh red man golden blend Mm -hmm. which was their next step up from the bfls and stuff and we fished four of them uh and and like i say we started in 85 you know when i got out of high school um you know traveling the road we had a double stack boat trailer that's how we traveled (laughs) and the crazy thing about it was is you know people ask me about that and, and I never took that for granted. And, and I really, you know, I had I had a buddy of mine's father passed away, you know, five, six years ago. And, and just being around him during that, that time, it made me realize that he really had no idea who his father actually was, you know. My father was my best friend, yeah. hands down. I mean, he was my best friend. We spent, the, we spent more time together, you know, doing – Everything. I mean, hunting, fishing, you know, family stuff, working in the shop. Uh, and, and like I say, I, I, I feel good about myself that I never took that for granted, yeah. you know. And Lawson doesn't either, yeah. you know. He, he realizes what a cool deal this is, yep. uh, you know. And just the fact of getting to get out there, you know, through Tin Cup and, and, and you know, a fine sponsor there, you know, it's afforded us to get out there, travel the road, do what me and his grandfather did, and and, uh, and like I say, hopefully we'll, you know, the way he's fishing should continue on for years to come. <laughs> he'll, you know, he'll be fishing for a minute if he keeps that yeah, up. That's right, that's <laughs> right. Uh, and he did great on film. You know, I, I didn't know how he would be. You know, with cameras following him the whole time and stuff like that. But but as far as I could tell, the live the live streaming stuff went great. You yeah. know, uh, yep. you know, very calm, very cool. You know, talk to the camera a lot. You know, which is, which is something that a lot of these youngsters don't do out there now. Uh, you know, you get the opportunity. You, you got to spit it out. If this thing right here is sitting here, you got to say something. Yes. Yeah. Speak into it. That's what it's for. You know. <laughs> and so many of these guys get on stage and, and they just don't have anything to say. And, and you know, the the crazy thing about it is, everybody sitting in front of you out there, is watching the most boring thing that's ever been <laughs> thought up. I mean, you bring them in in a bag, you set them on the scales, and they tell them the weight. At least golf, you get a hit at every time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you get to see somebody shank one every now that's and then. Right. That's right. In bass fishing, when you watch away in that, that's the most boring thing ever. Yeah. And I have grown over the years and watching my dad and watching the people that I like to see weigh in, it's the one. It's the one that makes you chuckle. You know, uh, I've my dad always. My dad was one of the greatest speakers ever, and uh, he would tell you right up front. He said, "You got to make them laugh. Got to make them cry," and he said, "And leave them wanting more." That's the greatest speaker. Uh, that's the greatest info you could give somebody. So I don't know if you remember I this have, or not. I have to get on stage with this year virtually no fish whatsoever. Uh, <laughs> Get up on stage, and I have to take those people's mind off of that little meager bag of fish that I got, you know. So I've had to add a whole other level to my speaking <laughs> abilities this year. But but it, it's, you got, you know, so many of these young guys are used to being on those computers and on their cell phones, and that's how they communicate. And you just, you don't get the opportunity to speak with a microphone very often. So you, you have to spit it out. You have to give them something. And uh, Lawson's pretty good at, you know, making them chuckle and stuff like that. And, and that, that was always the way, you know, my dad did it. And, uh, you know, I'm very proud that he's picked up the proper way to do that. You know, <laughs> if you get up there and you're like a school teacher, you know, well, the, the water column, if I hear water column one more time, <laughs> I, I'm gonna, you know, it makes me want to puke at a weigh-in, you know. Well, they were set up in the water column like this. No, don't throw that out there. That's not who you're talking to. You know, you're talking to people who came to see a big basket weighed in, you know. Uh, and it's a comparison. They they want to compare themselves to you, you know. Well, hell, I could have done that, you know. And that's good for them, you know. That's why they come to watch those things. 
but they also they've been sitting there for two and a half hours and they want to laugh a little bit. So you know you got to give them. What do you think? What do you think? And I don't want to get political or do something. So you can tell me no. We can look back this thing up and delete it. But like MLF, they don't really get crowds involved stuff like that. But the the pro circuit still and the elites and things like that. It's five fish that type of thing. It's it's kind of that format where people come out and look and watch. And then you've got the you got you got the other now. Do you, what's what? What do you think is going to be here in five years? I mean, do you think that's oh, I the think future? It's, I think it's you got to have both. I mean, and when I say that, uh, we we still all have to consider the fish is the star of the show. Okay, yeah. uh, and when I say that, the people that are watching it, whether it be on the internet, whether it be on a on the TV show portion of it, the fish is the star. You know, we're just the guys who wrangle it in there. But those people who who are watching that want to see how they would compare, and it, the only way they have to compare is you know he caught more than I did and stuff like that. So both of them have their place for the person that stands around or has their cell phone set out on their desk while they're doing their job during the day, and if it's on the live feed of a bass tournament, then that's the major league fishing type people. Yeah, you know that that's that group. But you still have an older generation that likes to come to weigh in. They like the the personal part of coming and seeing, you know, the guys. Man, I remember going to Table Rock from. back in the day with my dad and getting drugged down there and seeing Guido and Dion and Stacy King know. and Denny Bright. You know what I mean? And it's and like that, that's and that's what it was all about. You know that that changed that directed your life in a direction that you want to be involved mm-hmm. in this. You know, uh, and I think the personal part of it is lost a little bit on seeing them weigh them in, drop them back in the water mm-hmm. because you don't have the interaction when it comes to the weigh-ins. Yeah. Uh, you know, so so I, I'm a, I'm kind of a, I don't want to be politically correct because I don't care. Uh, <laughs> I don't care what anybody thinks about this podcast. And when I say that, that's a bad thing to say. But what I mean is my opinions like anybody else's. I like them both. Yeah. I, I do think they both have their place in this. Uh, what's going to be the one in five years down the road? I don't know. Ray Scott's done a good job for a long time, you know, and, and people seem to like the elite type deals, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and I think it's nothing more than the personal interaction. You know, yeah. you still have people, you still have kids that want to walk up to you, you yeah. know, and, and get your autograph and they want to hear you talk. They want to just shoot the breeze with you for just a split second. Yep. And, and that's all they need, you yep. know. And then they can say, hey, you know, Dion, Fred, Dion Hibden, he's a friend of mine, you know. And, and that's <laughs> best fine. Friend. You he's know, my best I, friend. I'm, I'm good with that, you know. Uh, you know, uh, the crazy thing about it is the guy that, that runs the 10 cup fishing deal that, that got it all started. That's how I met him. Yeah. He walked up to me and dad at a show and he wanted to buy a, one of my dad's team Daiwa signature series rods and reels, <laughs> you know, back when we were all with team Daiwa, you know, and, and it's flourished into, he's my best friend. You yeah. Know, he, he does. We worked together, you know, on this 10 cup deal, but you know, I was the best man in his wedding. I mean, but that came from a kid walking up, just wanting an <laughs> autograph. That's crazy. And, and, and that's cool. You know, yeah. I, I meet these college kids all the time, you know, see them at the gas station. They well, Hey, yeah, you spoke at my college, you know, this, that's, that's what this has been all about for me. You yep. know, is meeting people. If I've influenced somebody's life, awesome. You know, if I haven't, I apologize. I should have tried harder. <laughs> But still, you know, my dad, my dad never had anybody walk up to him that he didn't talk to. Yeah. Okay. Never, ever did he, did he say, Hey, I'm in a hurry or nothing like that. He always took the time to, you know, just a few words, you know, Hey, you know, I'm kind of pressed for time, but if you'll hang out, you know, I'll come back. And, you know, he always took care of those people and, and, you know, and that's what gets people started. You know, that's the only thing that scares me about having, no co-anglers anymore. You mm-hmm. know, that's the only thing that I think everybody's kind of overlooked a little bit is I, I don't buy fish and tackle. Yep, i got a basket full of stuff right out here in the store right now. And that's because I, I can't find it anywhere else. Uh, but for the most part, fishing equipment, we don't buy it. Mm-hmm. We, we call and they give it to us, you know, and stuff like that. These co-anglers that fish out of the back of the boat, they go out there and they spend eight hours with you in a boat, mm-hmm. okay? If they enjoy the way your boat rides, guess what? That's the boat they're going to look for next time they go to buy themselves a boat. Yep. 
if they, but more importantly, if they had a good day in that boat, that changes their attitude completely, you know, because, hey, I went out with Dion and, you know, and his new Camus, and it was awesome, you know, we had a great time, just chucked it up, left, you know, laughed all day long and stuff like that, and I mean, you don't have to laugh all day long, be a complete idiot, but, but, you know, they just had a good time, and they remember that. The yep. next time they walk in to buy something, if it's between my stuff or another fisherman's stuff that they didn't have such a good time with, guess what? They're probably going to buy my stuff, Absolutely. even if it's inferior to this other dude's. Uh, you know, and, and that's the way this industry has always went. And it's so secretive. You know that, what I mean? Like That's, what, that's what scares me. Yeah about the tournaments. Yep. Is, Fishermen are so quiet and secretive about stuff too. And you know, that's the nice thing about like the non-boater side, you know, you know, as I grew up fishing, is whether as a BFL is a non-boater, BFL is a boater, then sharing some of what I've learned fishing the, the Toyotas. And then I did the tour as a non-boater, like to see and experience that. Yeah. You can go be a marshal now, which is cool. But I don't know if I'd have gone out and been a marshal. I want to go fish. Like if I'm going to drive to Florida and go walk, yeah, you know, if I can absolutely. go catch, even if I don't, I don't care if I cash a check, I, but at least I want to be flinging a Cinco behind Dion while he's punching a mat. I can learn yeah. and do that. I, I feel like we, I we've almost see, built it up too much. I, I want to see Seth fighters feather jig. That's right. I, 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 That's I, don't, right. I don't want to see, I don't want to yep. see the one that he sells. That's I want right. to see the one tied on the end of his pole. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and all these new tournaments have kind of, they're getting away from that a little yep. bit. And, and that, you know, you said, what do I see five years down the road? That is what I fear, yeah. is is that the, the industry is going to suffer some, you know. Uh, you know, yep, college, high school, everybody's getting into it. I couldn't be more tickled with that because we are getting the youth Absolutely. to do something other than video games, video games <laughs> and stuff like that. They're actually wanting to be on the fishing team, Uh and that's a very cool deal. That's awesome. If I'd had something like that when I was in school, I would have never finished school. But they would have had to have had some sort of points for fishermen. I mean, <laughs> they, they would have to give some sort of school credit Te- on. Teacher, if I catch hey, 18 you know, pounds, will you give me a right. C and let me pass? That's right. <laughs> uh, but the way it was, I just had to supply a lot of crappie to a lot of teachers. <laughs> um, but the thing of it is, that's the only thing scares me about five years down the road is, is you know, is – the boat business is the, you know, lure business and stuff. Is it all going to be good enough just because of the TV? Yeah. You know, because the people that have a lot of money, that spend a lot of money on fish and tackle and stuff, they're older people. They're, and when I say older, I'm, I'm talking my age and up. You know, I'm 54. And from my age and up, those are the people that have the money. They, yep. have, they have a lot of the cash. Everybody else is raising families. Yep. And stuff like that, you know, at that age and below, you know. But still, the people that have a lot of money, it, it's almost like our sport's kind of alienating away from those people. You know, they, they can't come and fish the co-angler side on yeah. something, you know, to just try it out. Uh, you know, or if it comes to their home lake and they just want to go out with a different guy for a couple of days. Um, and that scares me a little bit, yep. you know. Uh, as far as whether they like seeing us, you know, weigh them in the boat and the marshal and, and everything and turn them loose right there, that's an awesome deal for the environment. Absolutely, you know, because you don't have no, no fish kills. Yep. You know, for the most part, they're, you know, you turn them all back alive. And, and that is something that we all have to think about, you know, is our environment as we go along. But like I say, I, I think you got to do it a little bit of both ways. Yep. You know, I, I don't think you'll ever get w- rid of what the elites are doing now yep. or or our MLF, you know, big tour or whatever. Big pro circuit. That's big pro circuit. Circuit. Yeah, big pro big circuit. Pro circuit. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't think you can ever get away from that. Uh, because, like I say, when we get to the weigh-ins, the there's, fish, people. there's people. The fish are the stars. Yeah, That's, there's people there. You know, the, you know, the guy walking around with the really cool, you know, painted up shirt and everything, that's one <laughs> thing. But they want to see how they would rank. Yep. compared to that dude, yep. you know. So the fish are still a big part of it. You know, they want to see them. You know, if, if you're so fortunate enough to catch an eight- or nine-pounder, that crowd, they want to see it, you know, and, yep. and they brag about it and they talk about it, you know. Lake of the Ozarks last year, I went to see Lawson weigh in at one that I didn't fish, you know, uh, just, you know, regular tournament. Now, a guy weighed in a nine-pounder. That was, That's that a was big, the big talk in. of the town. That's I a big, mean, big everybody... 
everybody for a week. You know, they talk, oh, my gosh, you hear they weigh down a nine something, you know. Uh, you know, the fish are the stars. That's that's who they are, and they, you can't lose sight of that somewhat, you know. Um, so, you know, do I know what it's going to do in five years? No, I don't. I really, I w- wish I had more four sights than, Crystal than what I do. Yes. We'll get one of the eight balls. Yeah. Like. But but I can see them both, you yeah. know, because there's a lot of guys. I know a lot of guys through, through working a lot of the 10-cup promotions and stuff like that. Uh, you know, I do little stuff for them, little two-minute blurbs. Uh, what are they called? Uh, no, 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 no. What's, what's one of the – it's not Facebook. It's the – Oh, TikToks. Yeah, TikToks? stuff. Well, Instagram, it's not TikToks. TikToks. Wow. Instagram. There you go. Instagram's not, that's as far as I'm along as Instagram. We'll, we'll keep TikToks. you. We'll keep you. TikToks. We're gonna out do, of my league. We're, so we're going to do a TikTok with you. Yeah, but Instagram. <laughs> we're going to call John. <laughs> I do. I do Instagram stuff and just a little bit, yeah. you know, and it blows me away who talks to me about it. There will be 30 guys that weigh in that are sitting at takeoff the next morning. <laughs> That talk, about, that talk about my Instagram that I talked don't, about last night. Don't tell anybody how you're catching a fish. At 9 <laughs> o'clock at night. And I'm like, D- do you dudes not sleep? I mean, uh, I was, uh, d- you know, and, and I got to doing them at home in my easy chair with blanket over my legs. You know, I'm watching TV. And my wife interrupted me and said, hey, let's do one of these. <laughs> and and uh, so I do it, you know. And I, but I'm truly probably sitting there in my underwear and the whole deal. <laughs> but, you know, uh but anyways, I put it on the right shirt, you know, and I, I was doing them out of my easy chair. And I've had so many people say, that's so cool. You know, you're not in a bass boat. Yep. You know, you're not holding on to a big one. You're just sitting there and you're telling us what you think about how the day went or whatever. Yep. And, and they really enjoyed those. Absolutely. Uh, and, but it, it blew me away the, the first time, the first takeoff that I went to, how many of the fishermen told me that they watched that. They were watching. That, yeah. yeah, that they saw that, you know. And, uh, you know, I, something interesting to me is like, there's these YouTubers on, 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 on YouTube that do social media stuff, whether it's a podcast, whether it's out on the water fishing. And I'm almost fearful because I'm, I think I'm from the old, I look at myself from the old school area, just growing up, going to the tournaments, things like that. Well, there's this new demographic from five, eight, ten years ago when people started doing the YouTube channels and things like that. You've got a guy that's never fished a tournament in his life, never done anything, and he's moving the needle so much, getting millions of views, not even doing the tournament circuit. And then we start alienating some of these anglers and not having non-boaters in the boats, not getting in front of cameras, not talking to microphones, not doing that stuff. And these YouTubers are coming in, and, and I'm not talking bad on any of them from that standpoint, but it, it's interesting that it's shifted because the average fisherman, my dad is the guy you were talking about that watches a video online and then goes and goes to tackle warehouse or baitworks.com and buys a bajillion different yes. things. And the people that do that, I don't know that they give a dang. I think it goes back to you're the fish is the star and the anglers are the people that are promoting what they're doing in the outdoors because it's their hobby and it's the passion. It's what they love. It's just an interesting demographic and what's happening. And there's a lot of people making a living in the fishing industry that aren't professional anglers, but they are on YouTube doing different things and, and fishing every day and putting a lot of content out. And it's really interesting to me. And instantly I kind of go back to the old school, looking at some of the pros that are doing stuff. And I'm like, he, you guys need to be, you need, you need to do that. Like, you yeah. know, cause these kids are making money, moving the needle on the tackle sales and the, and the sponsors and things like that, that at some point, if they keep alienating themselves and not having fans come and not doing seminars and not telling secrets and tricks and not doing stuff like that, well, nobody's going to follow you. And if nobody follows you as an angler, guess what? Who's going to pay you? Yeah. You know, cause yeah. it all kind of goes around. How do you go do that if you don't get paid? Yeah. So people, it is interesting. It, it, it's, it's very interesting. You know, I, uh, you know, I went to the Classic last year, uh, worked for 10 Cup, you know, and when the Guggen guys show up. Exactly, uh, yeah, spot on. It's like a bunch of rock stars. It's like the Beatles just walked in. Do do and, and, I, and I'm good <laughs> with that. I'm good with that. If, if they figured out a niche in the sport that I've been in my whole life, how to make money, how to get people excited about it, I'm all for it, okay? We got, I, I got nothing bad to say about it, you know, it. it but it, it is, it's, it's changed. It's changing. What's unbelievable is if you had a 15-year-old walk into our tackle store right next door, we shoot this podcast and we're in a room off to the side of the tackle store. So if you ever come to the tackle store, come check out the podcast room. But if you had a 15-year-old walk in and you have a wall of Guggen and a wall of Zoom, they might not even know what the Zoom is. Yeah. They'll, they'll tell you yes. every story of every person that's ever caught a fish, you know where, yep. on a Guggen bait. And it, it, to me, I look at a Guggen bait, not that it's not a good bait or a good product, 
I ain't never thrown it. It's just another bait. It's another bait. Yeah, it's just. Another but to bait. them, it's like it. Yeah. But it's a Guggen. <laughs> it's yeah. Like, okay. Yeah, I agree. Don't mind me. Pay I no agree. mind to me. <laughs> yeah, you know, and and I, you know, to say I've ever tore a package of them open, you know, I should, you know, because I'm sure some of it's good stuff. Maybe we're gonna go on a. Can we do a Guggen video with yeah, us? We could. We're we gonna could. only Guggen baits. We're yeah. gonna go skip them underneath docks. But but the thing of it is, it you're you're right. You know we. The way we receive our information mm-hmm. is totally different in 100%. this day and age from what it was yep. five years ago. You yep. know, it's it's evolved in the last few years, let alone 10, 15 years ago. You know, you, know, you yep. used to have to go, you know. Uh, Could you imagine having to read a ma- Bassmaster magazine to find out who won the tournament? Yeah. yeah I mean, <laughs> it, yeah, because, oh, heck, what's that take, three weeks now? You yeah. Know, you got to yeah. wait three it weeks on your magazine. This is fast. You know. Who won? And we, and we used to, you know. Dad always said it, you know, that way back when you got so much more mileage out of a tournament win than you do now for one reason. There's more tournaments. Yep. There's more tournaments. By the time people know back then, you know, you take back 10 years ago when it was magazine and Bass Times and stuff like that, well, it took you three weeks to get the magazine from when yeah. you'd won. And, you know, so you got that kind of mileage. You know, you got more mileage out of a win. Yep. Now, by the time you win... You know they can. They know you won. You that have day. a you have a grandbaby catch an eight pounder on YouTube. The next thing you know, that tournament got negated the next day for an eight pounder getting yes. caught by a six year old. You yeah. know, I mean, it's crazy uh, how fast technology it, is. Yeah, the technology is so much faster, so it's all up to date. And you know, live feeds and stuff like that. Holy crap, that's going to take our sport to a whole new level. Oh, it. You know, I live lo- feeds. Oh. You know, I, I I get up in the morning. Okay, I'll just tell you how my day goes. I get up in the morning. When I'm at home, I get up in the morning. My wife's school teacher, so she gets up way earlier than I do. Uh, most time, I'm still laying this away when she kisses me by. You know, I, I'm, I'm not upright. And I get up. I cook some breakfast. And, uh, you know, and I flick on the TV in the kitchen. And if there's a live feed on, I don't get anything done till 1 o'clock in the day. Yeah, I'm there. And, and it captivates me. I'm like, holy crap. Oh. Oh, he, oh, no, he's behind now, you know, <laughs> and and I can't not watch it. I mean, it's like a train wreck or something. You, yeah. know, you can't take your eyes off of it. Nope. And so I think the live feed's probably the greatest thing that's ever happened to our sport. It, when it first came out, like, what was it, probably four years ago when live yeah. feed really started yeah. coming out? And I think that's when I kind of stopped fishing the tour as a non-boater, and, you know, I think it went through that change, and, you know... Just looking at it, it's like, oh my gosh! If I just took off work or whatever and watched the live feed, then you get to see what the top guys are. It's kind of like being in the boat with one yep. of them on a perfect draw when they're actually doing good. The amount of knowledge I've always like recently. You want to get it, be a good fisherman. Honest to God, you normally most people say it always is time on the water, but good lord, with watching the live feeds now, it's, you can watch YouTube and learn your electronics, and you can watch live feeds and watch yeah. anglers fish. You can do a lot of damage as a young angler or somebody new to the sport. Re- your learning curve, I think, is really fast. Now you still got to go apply it and do it. It's but it's my so much gosh, easier to obtain the, the the knowledge that you used to have to hunt for. Absolutely. Uh, and, and when I say that, you know, you used to have to hunt for, you know. Hey, so and so speaking at the Kansas City Boat Show. Yep. You know, I, yep. I think I'm gonna make a trip up there. You know, he's talking two times on this day about this or that. Yep. And you know, and that's the way you used to have to get it. You know. Uh, well, think about the first time you dumped your boat in Kentucky Lake, whenever offshore was really getting big with electronic stuff like that. How many times did you t- have? You know what I mean? Like the learning curve to learn how to see yeah. what does a fish look like on a graph when it's positioned right, yeah. and then not only knowing what it looks like, being able to position right to get, you know, and that whole system for somebody that doesn't live there yeah. like me and you. Yeah. When you did that for the first time, dude, you could go to YouTube right now and you could watch two days worth of videos, and you could probably go out there and hammer on them. Yeah, Maybe not at Kentucky it. Lake yes. right now, but. Pickwick, you know yeah, what I mean, yeah. and it's just it's crazy to think about that and how it changes. That's that's why when I show up to these tournaments and there's, you know, half the field is, say, thirty five and down, mm-hmm. and and a lot of that's because of that the that's learning right. curve and the gathering the knowledge, you know, and these young guys winning these tournaments and stuff, they got the same info, yep. they got the same knowledge that I've obtained in 54 years of do you know of my life yep. you know and, and they've just gathered it up in just the last few years yeah you know that's that's what youtube and stuff like that has brought um you know and, and it's it's amazing you know my ex-wife one time called me a dinosaur <laughs> she says you have to evolve and then the she ice was- age is coming you know you gotta move on buddy you know and uh 
And I did say is, X. Is, that, is, that, that. is that when it became X? Right, yeah, right yeah, at that real was soon. That, yeah, was yeah. that the moment no. that it became X? <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, and, and I, I use that. I, I talk about that a lot because it's, a, it's the truth. You know, it is the truth. If you don't get on your phone, uh, you know, when your pan optics is not doing the exact right thing, you're wasting time yep. because it's quicker for you to go on on your phone and look it up how to adjust it and everything else than to call the factory and get help to tell you the same thing. Yep. Yep. You know, uh, and it, it, it's just amazing to me how how fast and easy it all is. You know, and I'm still very backward, you know, about everything. <laughs> but I do have a whole mess of sons that can Where, help me out. Where's my rod? How do you position? That's right. That's right. <laughs> You know, and I and I've always me and Dad said it for many many years that it'd be cool to have an old time tournament. Yeah, and you know, no electronics, no maps, no nothing, just just go fishing. Yep. You know, and take everybody to a brand new lake that they've never seen before, and say, "All right, boys, get them." You know, and and, and it would amaze you how many people that would eliminate. You know, because it. it <laughs> It's just not I, the way it is. Anymore. I remember when I got my first GPS and it was on a handheld and we had a suction cup and we stuck it on the side of the That's boat. Right. I thought I was high stepping because I had a Lowrance. What was it? An L, I had an LMS 337 and an LCX 17. And when I got the color one, I thought I was, I thought I was big leagues whenever yeah. I had a six inch screen on my graph. Yeah, and I, I'm just going to tell you one worse than that. I can remember when you used to carry my depth finder down <laughs> like a satchel, <laughs> like my lunch box. Yep. All right. That's, yeah, that's how I carried my first Lawrence to the lake, you know. Uh, <laughs> Kaylin's looking at us like, what? Yeah. They yeah. were paper graphs. You know, the fish finders, they used yeah. to have paper running through them, and you could see, oh, it's crazy. Yeah, there's yeah, there's been many, many advancements in that deal. From I was running I around St. Clair last week, and we were, you know, just out. I mean, what's the big bay? Everybody fishes up there. I forgot what it's called. Whatever. The big giant bay on St. Clair. So we're out in front of that, and I'm looking at the bank and just kind of looking at the tree. You know what I mean? Just kind of lining yeah. up and doing stuff. And I'm like, my gosh, like, could you imagine? You come out of that river from the Ohio, you know, uh, Ontario, and down, it's like, you get your butt lost out here. You know what I mean? You'd have to hit the bank and then drive down the bank to get where you're trying to go on that. And it's like, you think about Okeechobee and those lakes, and it's like, now you take it for granted. You just jump in the boat and yeah, haul. It's, it's, not, it's not scary at all. <laughs> it's know? not scary now. Yeah. I, my gosh, you could get lost, like I literally. Can, you know, me and Peter T. last week, we got to talking about that stuff, you know, uh, one of, one of the most miraculous things I ever saw in my life was Dad and Kevin Van Dam started on the same spot in Lake Sinclair. And my dad did not have a GPS. <laughs> and I have been to that spot with my GPS and had a hard time getting on it. It's such a little tiny area. And he did it without any of it. You mm. know? And I'm like, how did you even think about doing that? You know, Why would you even think about doing something like that? And, you know, but that's, that's how you had to do it. You, you didn't have that stuff. There wasn't a choice then. No, there wasn't a choice. You line it up know? off this, that, or the other. And yeah. my gosh, you think about St. Clair. Yeah. Like, if you haven't been there. The first time I went whew. to Lake Champlain, yep. did not have a GPS. Went mm. to Lake Champlain. I, I, it was in 97. I won the Classic. Didn't get to practice, but one day at Lake Champlain, went out. Everybody was fishing on the Inland Sea. And I thought, ah, I don't have to make the Classic. I'm going to go over to the New York side. And I went to the New York side where there was virtually nobody fishing, absolutely nobody. Ran over a rock pile out in the middle of the lake. Didn't physically hit it, but I could have. There was rocks tall enough. <laughs> Ran over it with my boat. Got a couple lineups off of a farmhouse and a, and a smokestack on a factory back off in the distance. And that's how I fished that tournament, you know. That's how I found my spot cool. every day, you know. Got out there and, and located it every day. Um, you know, out in the middle of the New York side where it was three miles wide, you know. Uh, mm. But today, you know, in this day and age, it's just so much easier. Everything's yep. easier, you know. Forward imaging stuff, that's like cheating. I mean, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, it, it's amazing. What amazes me about it is is how so many people have got it and gotten efficient with it yep. so fast. Yep. I mean, you know, normally, but it's easy. It's, normally it's there's easy. a little bit of a learning curve. You know, it takes everybody, you know, oh, I'm better at it than you are for a little bit. No. <laughs> These guys are mounting them on their boats, they're watching YouTube, and they're going fishing yep. with them. Uh, you know, and the ease and, of use now. You know, Garmin's had yes. it for so many years now, and, and now that the other ones are coming out with them. But, you know, I don't I don't know there's going to be, a, you know, they're all going to be good. But, yeah. I mean, you just pointed at a fish, and if you flip a bait to the fish, he eats it. 
And yeah. if he doesn't eat it and he swims off, well, it might be a tough day today. Yeah. You know, but you know, golly. It's, it's amazing, you know, the way things have evolved, you know. Uh, like I say, I carried a green Lawrence <laughs> lunch pail to a metal boat with silver troll trolling motor and a 35-horse Avenue on it, uh, you know, when I started out. And uh, and caught them, you know. That's the, that's the hell of it is, you know, caught them back then, you know. Uh, if my dad would have had forward imaging and braided line for his spinning rods, he would rule the earth. Yeah. I mean, he, he would be, he would have been the king, yep. you know, because, and a lot of people say, oh, Guido wouldn't have liked that forward imaging. I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> that guy was forward imaging. I mean, he was all about getting, sneaking up on that fish and, and stuff like that, you know, and uh, forward imaging would have been right in his wheelhouse. He would have loved that, you know. Um you know, now there's a lot of the other stuff that you know, oh, he, you know, he wouldn't have paid no attention to, but, but yeah, forward imaging would have been. There's not many products you can stick on your boat and catch a fish and say no. I caught it because of that. I remember no. the first time I had it, and I went to Lake of the Ozarks. It was in the fall, and we were throwing jerk baits. And the next thing I know, I look up and I'm in the middle of the cove, and I'm still smashing them on a jerk bait, yep. just running around like an idiot. And it's you're just fishing, like, oh my gosh. The deal with forward imaging is, is you're fishing where you've never fished before. You're, yep. th- you're throwing at stuff that you would have never, ever yep. thrown at before. Yep. And uh, The and whole lake's fishable. Yes. You know, the whole lake's fishable yep. when before it wasn't. Lawson took me out. Uh, Lawson's uncle, um, great in the crappie industry, um, you know, was leading angler of the year this year in the crappie industry. And, uh, and needless to say, it's all about forward in- imaging. And Lawson has, Lawson has taken me and shown me some stuff, you know, and different things with it. And on Lake of the Ozarks, we put in at the Shawnee Bend ramp, and he says, and, and there's a crappie tournament going on. There's guys right out in the middle of the lake, right in front of me. It's one of the deepest portions of Lake of the Ozarks, and they're fishing out there. And I'm like, what, what they can doing? they be catching? They're not catching crappie. He says, you don't think they're out there, do you? I said, no. I said, they're not out there. I said, crappie like brush. He says, not them crappie. Watch this. <laughs> not them crappie. We idled away from the launch ramp. We were idled straight out in the middle of the lake. He jumps up, puts his trolling motor down. And it takes him about 30 seconds to catch one. And they're they're out there just like they are around the bank. And that's why this oh is so gosh. good and so easy for a lot of things. Now, bass are different. It's not as easy with bass yeah. because bass is an ambush predator. Yep. Okay, He likes to be hiding around stuff. So you can't always see him well, mm-hmm. you know, but you can damn sure see where he lives, you know, and that's the big key to it. You just don't run over the brush piles before you get to them. You know? oh, that's my the problem. Little, the little pile the of rings. rocks. <laughs> the the little, rings. The little pile of rocks that unless you make the perfect cast, yeah. you, you won't even know they're there. Yeah. You know, and uh, and your boat can be for me to her away from it, and you never you never yeah. run over it with your regular electronics. Yeah. You know, now you got side imaging you can see it with and stuff like that. But that's What's, saying you can pick it out out there, and you can physically just. Cast right where he lives. Yep. That, well, the efficiency. The, you know, I, I went to Lake of the Ozarks, and I used to, you know, I have a Lorance, and I love my touch. I, you know, my waypoint management. Waypoint management is a big deal in a lake like Lake of the Ozarks because I could see the boat docks, and I could put my waypoints where the brush piles were. And I spent the whole summer. I got 11th, I think, at a, B, a Toyota series up there. I spent the whole summer with a half ounce weight or a three quarter ounce weight and a little worm, but I wasn't even fishing. I was just feeling for the right type of brush. The brush yeah. And now, I, you know. <laughs> It's useless. You could yeah. see the brush, and you know how it is. Not all brushes created equal, so you still got to feel it to make sure it's the right type. But at that same token, dude, you could just go dump your boat in a cove, and you could just burn through thirty docks in a matter of minutes. So the efficiency that you've got with it, it's it Lawson, is it is game changing. Lawson can fish around a cove and never make a cast. Yep, he can literally go around a cove and tell you how many there is there that he would fish <laughs> for, yeah. and. and you know, and, and in the last few years, I've seen lots of guys. Brian Thrift. I've seen Brian Thrift go whole practice. They'd never make a cast. Yeah. Looking at, you know, he's got three giant hummingbirds on, on his boat, you know, and one of them is dedicated for as far out this way. The other one's as far out that way, and then he's got one that shows below him. But for the most part, he's covering 600 feet of land out there. Idling eight miles around, an hour. Just idling around. <laughs> Think about how much of the lake he can cover. Yeah. And, and, you know, just looking for little tiny piles of rocks, you know, or a little patch of brush or just anything, you know. 
and you know spend the whole day long doing that. You know, just just spend a whole day of practice. I, I'm not to that. I can't. Do how that how yet. what we kind of poked at Lawson a little bit on this. You know, what does a practice day look like? Because you guys have two days, is yes, that right? Two days. Yeah. So I mean, what does that look like for you in your world? I mean, are you scanning and doing that? Or are you going and trying to catch them? I mean, you you probably have an idea what's going on we, with it before you get there. We work together pretty much. You know, as far as the way things go on a lot of that stuff, but we. We do a lot of fishing. I do a ton of fishing uh, compared to him. You know, he does a lot of looking and, and a lot of finding and stuff like that. Uh, you know, but we also, we still do a lot of fishing too. You know, mm-hmm. it's not it's not like we spend our whole days looking, you know. Uh, we went to Lake Eufaula. We, it's one of the only lakes that we actually pre-practiced. Uh, we went to Lake Eufaula and we actually spent three days searching for brush and marking brush piles and stuff like that um, and ended up, didn't use any of it, you know. Really? When the tournament rolled around, that was not happening, you know. So that was a good guess, Will. Yeah, spend. that was. But you're ready for next time. That's right. Next time we go fish for brush, I got a lot of good GPS marks. But uh, and actually, I think there was only one or two guys that made the top ten doing that fishing yeah. brush, and they were locals, you know. Uh, but anyways, you know, we spent a quite a bit of time looking. I spend more time looking than I used to, uh, just because the equipment's so much better. Um, you know, so, you know, we do do a lot of looking, but we also still do a lot of fishing. Mm -hmm. It's still a lot of old school for us. Uh, you know, probably me more than him. Um, you know, but still, you know, it's, it's kind of a, kind of a neat package with the two of us, you know, uh, you guys share, I mean, obviously you guys are family, so I'm sure you share information, but go, what does that look like? I mean, and even if it wasn't Lawson you were fishing with, do you like fishing in groups of people and helping and doing that you or know, how does that work you gotta you gotta make sure you got somebody that you know real well and you trust and and uh, we actually travel with another fellow joe weberg and uh and like I say just as good a cat as you ever want to be around he fishes a little bit faster than i do so therefore you know like at the potomac he clued us in on a chatterbait deal that was happening uh you know where we clued him in on some of the wood fishing you know and how mm-hmm. to do it and how, what to do and what to throw at him and stuff so yeah, we try to work together with a couple, you know, with especially amongst ourselves. Yep. You know, yeah, I know everything Lawson pretty much does on a practice day, and he knows everything I do. Yep. Um, you know, a lot of my info that I have from years past, you know, it plays in. You know, it, it comes in a, you know, this is what they do. This is a section of lake that's normally good this time of the year. Uh, you know, so stuff like that. You know, it helps out. You know, it's a pretty good combo. You know, for us. You know, because he's very efficient at everything. And, you know, uh, I, I can see at some point in time him using electric reels and casting with both hands. I mean, he, he, <laughs> if they ever open it up where you can use two rods, trust me, Lawson could do it. Uh, <laughs> Man, he was know. fired up. We did a podcast with him on last week's episode, and the the passion that he shows in the sport. and like, You could tell he is fired oh, up there's, to fish, and the, he was talking about making baits and doing this and doing that and there's time no, on the water. And, nobody works as hard at it as he does. Yeah. I've, ne- I've never seen anybody. I never did. Never, ever. I mean, my dad did. My dad worked very hard at what he did. And, and to boot, he was a natural-born outdoorsman. Yeah. Period. You know, Lawson, Payton, uh, even Connor – all have a lot of that you know my whole family has a lot of that natural ability when it comes to stuff like that um you know some of the best shotgun shots in the world (laughs) you know when it comes to deer hunting they get bored with it you know they're so good at it you know uh and, and when i say that but the fishing the fishing's different they're just totally eat up with it lawson doesn't think about anything else you know he is totally focused, which is what you have to be in this day and age. You have to live it, breathe it, you know. Uh, you know, I have other things, too. You know, I, I'm, I'm to the point in my career that I have other things, you know. I got six grandkids. Uh, the best thing that happened to me at the Potomac River is Lawson's little boy went with <laughs> us. You know, Lawson's eight-month-old went with us, you know. So, and, and that, you know, that meant a lot to him also, that his, that his wife and his baby got to go. Uh, you know, but it, it's one of those deals. He's totally focused on what the business at hand, what he needs yeah. to do. And, uh, yeah, if there's anybody who works at any harder than him, I don't know who it would be, yeah. you know, because we're in the water before daylight and we don't take off till it's pitch dark almost every night of practice. 
you know, they shorten our practice days up, and that just makes my days longer, you know, because, you know, we really – we, we want to work at it. We want to do well. And, uh, and like I say, he works at it as hard as anybody, you know. Uh, and he fishes a ton. You know, he fishes anything he can get into. He fishes all the time. Uh, and, like, here there's some special debates that he needs. So coming down here, that was just a perfect time for him to come Good. down here and get some of that special stuff. That Do we have cool baits at Bayworks? Oh, yes, we got some <laughs> cool works. And it's, we work so hard, and especially in this day and age, to try to keep stock and keep inventory yes. and work with you, suppliers and stuff like that to get the good stuff. So that's good to right hear. You have the right guys working for you because they're bass junkies just like we <laughs> are, you know. And, uh, and like I say, they just, you know, they know I made what them, they're talking I made about. them order a bunch of smallmouth stuff, and they just kind of gave me this look like, yeah. who, who's going to throw that around here? That's I'm like, right. You guys did. Bull Shoals. <laughs> I came up there. <laughs> yeah, bull Shoals and Table Rocks full of them nowadays. Yep. You know, you got to have you got to have some sneaky that baits. That's got to right. have some sneaky baits. So. But, but how, anyways, how much how much max scent do you have in your boat going up there? A max scent. Lawson has a set deal with uh two different bass pro shops that when they get us <laughs> when they get a shipment in, yep. he gets called. Yep. And between, between him and Joe Weberg, I I don't know we're going to have to hire a U-Haul to carry that stuff there because I, <laughs> Last year when it was so hard to get, when I was traveling back and forth yes. fishing the Northerns, there's certain bass pros and stuff that yep, people don't know yep. about. I'm not going to say them on here because yeah. I don't want anybody knowing, but it's one of those places that it's like they don't know what that is. And I went there a couple times yep. and just go on yep. the shelves, and it's like I'm packed. Yep. We, uh, <laughs> we have definitely stocked up on the Max Sense yep. stuff. Yep. Uh, have you paid more than $20 a pack for one yet? No. No, I think I got, no, I'm up to 18 on a couple packs nah, we have just a, to make sure I got the right ones. We, but we just, we hunted hard, you know, yeah. and, and between Lawson and Joe, they found the right, they found the right stores. That's good. They didn't know what they were getting. That's exactly and what like you got to look for. And, and uh, so, yeah. We're driving to California, baby. Yeah, <laughs> we're going right. to get some accent. <laughs> yeah. Any given day. That's the crazy thing about Lawson. If, if he hears they got in a shipment, I mean, he'll drive to Columbia, Missouri and yeah. get all theirs and. You know, or drive down here to Springfield and get yep. get a batch or something. But you know, and, and and the crazy thing about it is, day in day out, you could stand toe to toe with them same guys and catch them on lots of other boats. Oh. You know, uh, the 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 marabou jig, that's hilarious. I've used marabou <laughs> jigs for my whole life. <laughs> That's what the original jigs were, were Maribu, yep. you yep. know. And now. Now you see Seth Fire, they're flinging Seth's, around. That. It's magic. It's a new bait. Oh, yeah. Something <laughs> brand new, new. And I'm like, I. What color you throw? How I made Black. My, <laughs> that's how I made my spending money when I was in school, when I was a kid, is I wrapped Marabu jigs because nobody nobody made them. Yeah. There, very few people made them <laughs> that, were, that were made for anything other than crappie fishing or white bass fishing. Yeah. That's how I made my money. I yep. made them for everybody, and I mean bigger ones and yep. and stuff. So yeah, and they uh, only catch smallmouth up north, they right? Only catch smallmouth. Yeah, that's it. My dad said for many many years. He said if he said if I was on a stranded island, I had to have one bait. Well, I, it it used to be in the like in the little army packs that they gave you for a survival deal. <laughs> you had one white marabou jig in there. That's so you could feed yourself if you were stranded anywhere. <laughs> You know, and now it's that's the greatest newest bass bait ever. But on to the next. Yeah, on, yeah. It's just it's one of those deals. It's it, fishing has evolved so much, and that's probably what's exciting for me is that I've seen it do that. You know, even though I'm a dinosaur and I still like to do it old school style, you know, I, I'm still gonna win some. I'm still gonna win some of them ones that everybody's like, wow. They, they they still live up shallow. Old timer went down through the bank with a jig, you know, and really wrecked them, you know. That's still going to happen some, but it's not going to happen as much as it did 20 years ago because there's so many new things and so many guys doing new things. I'm almost hoping that the pressure, you know, you look at the forward-facing sonar stuff now, and, you know, last year just at Lake Erie and fishing up north, you'd get right on them. They wouldn't care. Well, 15 tournaments later and you know yes. it's still the beginning of the year if you if you range them and you're within 30 foot they were spooky as all get out i had to back my thing out to 100 foot and fire at them absolutely you know so i mean i think that's still going to put pressure on the fish and we're, you know i'm in the stalls and islands I, we were, we're talking to thousand islands next week there's yep. been four majors yep. up there yep. this year so far already. Yep. Just right now. And fishing season hasn't been open. It yet. hadn't even been started That's hardly. That's right. It's just barely <laughs> started, and there's already been four major tournaments up there. 
uh, you know, and by the time Lawson gets to the one on Lake Champlain, it's going to be beat up too, you yep. know. So, yeah, that was funny this morning watching the live feed in Sticks' office over there a minute ago. They're talking about, oh, well, the weights are down from last year. Well, holy crap, guys, they beat, bruised them up. How can they not be down a little bit? No. You know, somebody was in the cut with 30 pounds after two days. Oh, well, guess what? That's still 15 yeah, pounds yeah, a day. Yeah, that's terrible, yeah, isn't that, it? 15 pounds bad, of smallmouth. <laughs> you know, especially been so 90% of the four-pounder has been caught, you know. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like their, uh, their Start flogger. Fishing. That's right. Flogger. Yeah. I, the first flogger I ever seen 40 years ago. Yeah. Hands down, forty at least forty years ago. Yep. On on you know Lake of the Lake of the Woods, up there they was using them back then, and I'm like, holy cow! Everybody's <laughs> gonna have to have one of these now. These young guys, I put this out there on TV and on YouTube. And there's. Gonna, I wonder how many they've sold this there's month. There's gonna be a flogger station, you know, at some point in time, and I'm we're like, gonna have to order some for the crap. store. Flogger fights. Well, I tell you what's <laughs> gonna happen is there's these states, someone's gonna fish these states around this country. They're going to lose their parking cones. I can tell them that. Because <laughs> the first ones I've seen was a parking cone. Oh, absolutely. It was a parking cone. And the great ones were the ones they use on the interstates. It's about this the tall. One. That way you didn't have to bend over. <laughs> you could stick it down in the water and just stand right there and look through it. But, uh, oh, yeah. Zona. You don't hear Zona saying nothing about it. He's being <laughs> real quiet about it. I seen He's him going, using oh, one. man. I seen him using a parking cone 20 years ago, you yep. know. But. You got to fly around here. <laughs> Huh? Surely it'd apply around here, wouldn't it? Bull oh, shoals, absolutely. things like that. Absolutely. It'll work right you here. You stick it in like the Ozarks and you can see your hand. Yeah. <laughs> see the bottom of the cones, you know. <laughs> Maybe. <it. laughs> Maybe. But, yeah, absolutely. Lake like bull shoals, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Those bigger ones don't spawn. My dad is always, you know, during the spawn, you know, my dad is was excellent at catching fish off the bed. You know, he's probably one of the best ever to live about catching them off the bed. And on Lake of the Ozarks, I never saw him look for one, ever, never in my life. And he would tell you right up front, that ain't where the big ones do it. He said, the big ones are right out here where you don't look for them and where you can't see them. Mm -hmm. They're just three foot deeper than three-pounders. Oh, yep, they just litter the bank with them. That ain't where them big ones live. They live slightly deeper. Well, This cone deal, or it is called a flogger. It's a flogger. Yep, yep, officially the flogger. It's going to open up where these fish on Bull Shoals and Table Rock really live. Yeah. You, you want to see a big bass on Table Rock during spawn? He's at the base of a cedar. Yeah. Yep. Period. Yep. And, Try and, and get a bait down there. That, that, <laughs> that's it. He's at the base of a cedar tree because they always have been. I mean, that that's it's where people can't get to him and stuff like that. You know, so, yeah, it's going to open a lot of people's eyes up because you can see with it. Yep. You know, you can see. Dion, thank you. I think we'll wrap up. I appreciate your time. Thank you for coming. We've heard, I, you know, we, I think if anybody, <laughs> if anybody was taking notes, you might get some good ones, and you might, uh, you might not. But there's some, definitely some good content there's a lot in there. Of bull crap too. You know, yeah, so. well, just a little bit. But, but on the good, I mean, we, I mean, gosh, guys, I mean, what some of the stuff that you've been talking about, and then we had Lawson last time. You know, some of the stuff that you guys said, it's just unbelievable. So the knowledge you guys have, thank you for sharing it with us. And um, like, subscribe, check us out, watch for the next video, and thank you guys so much for watching. Appreciate it.